WordPress plugins. So WordPress plugins give our website an added boost. I've always described them as being similar to apps on a smartphone, as I've already done a couple times throughout this series here. And there are so many different WordPress plugins available for free, but there are also some that are strictly premium or some that are both paid or free plugins. So when I say premium, I'm going to be referring to ones that cost money that are paid to use. Plugins have come a very long way. These days, plugins can range from anything from Google Analytics tracking to contact form creators, website drag and drop builders where you can build an entire website, and a lot of different things for website speed optimization, and there's so much more than that. So let's take a look at how to find and install a WordPress plugin now. All right, so we're back over here in the admin area for WPFundamentals.com, and here we can go to where it says plugins on the left side. And if we just click that, there's nothing in there right now. You have to go to add new. And right here, this is called the WordPress plugin directory. You can see right there. And here you can search for various plugins. You can also upload a plugin. So let's say you buy a premium plugin and you want to install it. One I recommended earlier was Short Pixel. And let's say I wanted to install that plugin. This is where I would go to upload. And then I would just drag and drop or choose the file and put the zip file right in there to upload that. Now, if I wanted to find which ones were popular, I could go down here and click on popular. And right here, we can see some of the most popular plugins. Here's contact form seven. Now this has been around forever and it has over 5 million active installs. And that's an example of how you can have a contact form creator with something like that. Yoast SEO, which is one I wanted to cover here is free to use and install but they also have a premium version as well if i click install now on that it's going to say installing here now it says installed and then we click activate to make the plugin active now in our plugins area it says we have one and it's yoast seo now right here it says premium support you can get that if you upgrade it to their paid plan but now we also have this icon over here that says y seo and that's for yoast seo and you can go through the settings and start setting up how your website will be looking in the eyes of Google. So you can change things like your SEO title, meta description, your organization name if you want. You can optimize your website to be found in Google. And then down here it talks about premium and how you can upgrade to their more premium version where they have a little bit more features going on than they do on the free version. The free version is great for the majority of people though. I will throw that out there. If you are considering purchasing that I would recommend playing around with a free version and seeing if it's for you and we'll get into that as we go into some of the pages and posts here and start creating them we're going to see what Yoast SEO allows us to do to optimize those pages and posts better which is something you need to do if you are creating a website so next I'm just going to go to add new and I wanted to talk about other popular ones or how to search for ones so let's say you go down here and you don't see the one that you want. The one I was actually going to put on here was Elementor Page Builder. But let's say you don't see it. You can search right here and go for something like Elementor as the keyword. And then it should pop up. You can click Install Now. And now that it's done, we can activate it. We'll hit Activate. And here it gives you like a two minute video that just welcomes you to it and tells you about what you can do with Elementor. It is a very popular page builder that you can use drag and drop functionality with to create all different types of websites and layouts. You, there's also a pro version for Elementor as well. So you're going to see that as the case for a lot of these where they have a free and a pro version for their plugins. Now, if we go back over here again, Let's go and say we want something for social media. We can go over here and go to add new. And let's just put in social hug, which is one that I use here and there. And something I should have mentioned earlier is what you want to look at is the rating for this and how many active installs it has. But what's more important than that is if it's compatible with your WordPress version and when it was last updated. So you can see that it was last updated a month ago, which is fine. The developers are active on it and it's compatible with this version of WordPress. Also, you see that has good feedback, and if you want to read more or look into more details about it, you click More Details, and you can see what the ratings are. You can see what reviews are if you really want to. You can um, read different reviews by these people. 
and you can learn more about the features within the plugin and what it actually does. So if you're not sure that's what you'd want to do, I'm just going to click install now. And now this will give us the ability to have social sharing buttons on our website, on our posts that we write for blog posts or pages if we want on pages of our website. And let's just activate that now. And I'm going to X out of this, X out of that as well. And now we have three plugins installed on our website. Most of my websites that I create, I end up having around 10 or so plugins, maybe eight or so plugins when I'm all said and done. I add other ones like WP Rocket, which is a pro plugin. You can find that at wpwithtom.com slash WP Rocket, all one word. And that is one that will speed up your website drastically. Now there are free versions of plugins that can speed up your website. They're not quite as good in my opinion, but let's just look up cache and it's going to be caching plugins. So these are plugins that will make your site faster like WP Super Cache here for example, WP Fastest Cache. I've used this one quite a bit before and I like them. They're fine. I just think that WP Rocket takes it to a whole nother level and I've done a lot of testing with speed testing and I've seen significant difference in my website speed when using WP Rocket. In this case I'll use this free version here for WP Facet Cache just so we have a fast caching plugin on our website to speed it up when it loads for users. So that's an example of how you can install some plugins and look around and find some plugins and basically you're just going to search like you would almost in a search engine within the area for the plugin directory right here to search for ones that you think would be a good fit for you and then you can install them and start using them on your site and if it's not a good fit then you can revert back now this is one that a lot of people also use right here classic editor that's what we had before we went to Gutenberg and if you can see right here the classic editor has a very high rating it has a perfect rating basically and the Gutenberg block editor has a pretty low rating so WordPress made this transition to Gutenberg, which I'm going to get into in the next couple of videos here, where they changed to a block builder to try to be more in line with what other sites are doing, like Wix and Squarespace and things like this. There's also builders that are coming into play, like Elementor that I mentioned, Divi, Brizzy. There's a lot of different block builders or page builders in, in place now, and Gutenberg was trying to go in that direction to make it a default for WordPress. I tend to like the classic editor more, but that's just because I used it for many years. A lot of people are now starting to move over to being on Gutenberg full time and not have this classic editor. But let's say you're struggling when you're trying to make pages and posts in the next few videos. The classic editor plugin might be one that you want to install. So with that all out of the way, let's dive into the next video and we're going to go over WordPress pages.